Folks, welcome back to another video. Oh my goodness gracious. Today, we have a very, very special, ah, uh, maybe not special, maybe fun, we could call it. A very fun activity, a very fun challenge we're gonna be attempting today, and that is reading 200 pages a day for an entire week. I was given this idea by my dear, sweet, beautiful wife, Ashlyn. She recommended I do this challenge because I have been wanting to read a certain book for a very long time. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while. I've been kicking around a few ideas lately and, and she came to me with this idea a few weeks ago and said, hey, you should do this challenge if you're really wanting to read this book. And holy crap, it just freaking clicked. Everything locked into place. And it was just it was just an absolutely perfect idea. And so we're gonna be reading 200 pages a day for an entire week. And and instead of trying to read as many books as we can in this challenge, we're going to be attempting to read one book. And what book might you ask is that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that book would be It by Stephen King. If you couldn't tell, this thing is a honking, honking boy. Honking, chunky, thick beast of a book. It is 1153 pages and we're going to attempt to read it in a week. Yeah. I'm flabbergasted, just like you. We have a very busy schedule this week. Ashley and I, we have dinner plans. We have a concert we're attending. Um, so there's a lot of things in the evening after work that uh, are going to steal my time away. Uh, one of the one of the tenets of this challenge I wanted to try to do was not listen to the audiobook of this while I'm at work because I tend to do that and that's how I can read some of these thicker books faster than I normally would. But I, I am gonna read the audiobook in tandem with this, but I'm, I'm going to curb myself and not allow myself to read it while on the road at work. So it's only gonna be around the house doing chores or walking the dog or doing doing something. I have to, I cannot read this at work. I can only read this recreational. So that's going to add another kink in the spokes uh, of this challenge. But folks, I think without further ado, let's just freaking jump into it. <sighs> Cue the montage. This book is gratefully dedicated to my children. My mother and my wife taught me how to be a man. My children taught me how to be free. Kids fiction is the truth inside the lie. And the truth of this fiction is simple enough. The magic exists. Part one. Ooh. It's crazy. Folks, it is the next day. I made it a decent way to 200. In fact, I ended my reading at page 221, and today I have read some more, and I'm currently sitting at somewhere like 315, 316, something like that. So we have a long ways to go. We have a long ways to go still. We have over 100 pages. Folks, oh my goodness, it has been, it's been a long time since I updated you guys. I think I told you that the first night I read 221 pages. And then day two, which is not what we're on, we're actually on day three right now, but day two I read close to 200. I think it was somewhere along, along like 170. I tried reading, going to sleep, and well, sleep one, of course. But, holy crap, day three has been productive. I not only made up for what I didn't achieve on day two, we, holy crap guys. So day two, we should have gotten at least page 400. And I think we got to page from 221 to like three, it was like 390, something like that, I think. Intermingled with the audiobook. But day three, let me tell you guys, let me tell you, day three has been awesome. We started at like 390 something and we're sitting pretty at 582. We are pretty much freaking halfway through this sucker. On day three, if I was just reading straight 200 pages, I should be at page 600. So we're really, really close to that. We're gonna actually, we're gonna surpass that today. This book is so good. Let me, let me kind of just, for those of you who don't know what it is about, it is a Stephen King horror classic. It's pretty much about this town in, in Maine called Derry, and it gets terrorized by a monster that takes the form of a sinister clown. And it, it more often than not preys upon the kids. And we follow 
a group of kids, about seven kids, who are terrorized by this monster. Uh, and people around them that they know, friends or... Thanks, buddy. Friends or neighbors that they know uh, either go missing, their bodies are found the next day or the day after that, or, and they're all haunted and terrorized in some way. And the creepy thing about what Stephen King is doing is that none of the adults seem to be aware of what the kids are going through. And the kids are really scared to say anything to anyone. Because each of them faces this isolated event, they think that they're either going crazy or that no one would believe them if they fessed up. It just seems to be this town that kind of represses tragedy. What's so cool is that you not only get the perspective of these characters when they're kids, but you're jumping back and forth 27 years between past and present to when they're adults in their late 30s. And it's, it's awesome. It is so, so good. Pennywise the Clown is terrifying. He's so terrifying. I didn't think that this book would give me any sort of fear or because I'd, I'd watched the 1990 miniseries when I was a kid. And of course I saw the 2018, 2019 film adaptations. Some of the ways Stephen King describes what's going on. There's been a few moments that have given me chills. Chills when reading it on paper and chills when I listen to the audiobook. Cause the guy, the guy that does the audiobook does voices so well. And anytime the clown shows up, it's just bone chilling. At the end of the day, this book is still really, really, really good, and I'm charging through it. So let's see if we can't get to page 600. I will see you guys later. Folks, 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 it is the next day. What is this, day four of the challenge? We hit our goal of 200 pages yesterday. Even though it was an extremely busy day, we had a we had dinner plans with friends, and then afterwards we stayed at their house for several hours while Ashlyn worked on a project there, and we just all kind of chatted and had a good time. It was nice, because we haven't done that in a while with work and, and whatnot, but I was able to hit the 200 mark, and I've been reading today as I've been out and about doing my, my work. We're currently sitting at page 710 on chapter 14 and oh oh my <laughs> oh my my Stephen King's been kind of bouncing back and forth between he's, he bounces back between 1957 and 8 to 1984 and 5 yesterday was pretty much just about the present where the you know all the the main characters finally reunite after 27 years or so they kind of reminisce and as they reminisce those who have been gone from Derry for so long their memories start coming back to them they start start remembering the horror of encountering the clown, of encountering Pennywise and encountering this being who, who terrorizes this community and, and steals and kills children. And so all of these nightmares are coming back to them. They have this idea to kind of split up and, and, and the one friend who's, who stayed in Derry who never forgot any of these things, he said, you know, you guys need to, to walk around town and maybe get some, maybe refresh your memory on this place. Maybe some stuff will come back to you and, and then we'll reconvene in the evening. Well, they all do. And and traveling with them, experiencing Derry again for, you know, after nearly three decades of being gone. Just, just... <laughs> How each of them have an encounter with the creature, even as adults, was still really scary. Uh, like, terrifying. I loved it so much. It was such a thrill ride. So now we're back to the summer of 1958 when they're 11 and 12 years old again. And I'm excited because I know what's coming. And for those of you who've read it, you know what's coming as well. One of the first of many climaxes, I think, in the book. Stephen King usually writes two or three, at least, in each novel. And we're about to get to the first big climax. <laughs> Folks, folks, <laughs> we are back and it is, um, I think it's the next day. Last time I left you off, if I wanted to read 200 pages, I had to read from chapter 14 to chapter 17. Well, I did that. I did that. We are still very much on track. 14 was on page 710, and I needed to get to at least 17, which was somewhere around like the 820 mark. Well, did that, did that. And I've been reading a, a lot today, especially after work, been reading a lot, and I'm currently sitting on page 930. 
30. Can you believe that? We are currently at, I think I'm on chapter, chapter 19. Stuff is insane with this book. Stuff is getting crazy. Just read the first, I guess you could call it first climax of the story. There's been so many things that I would consider it to be a climax, but I just read like one of the biggest, biggest things of this book. And it was, it was gripping the whole time. If you know what I'm talking about, it's the end of part four, chapter 18. I don't even know. I, I, I don't even know what to think. That was one of the most insane, nail-biting, adrenaline-pumping, heart-stopping, breathtaking things ever. Hi, Bubba. Hey there, Meshack. Hi. But when the when the kids determine to band together and they decide they're gonna try to take out the monster, that is one of the most insane things. I have ever read in my life. I wish I could have recorded it, but the days this week, I picked a really bad week to, to do a challenge where I try to read 200 pages a day. So far we've been very successful and today we need to read 90 more pages. We're currently sitting at eight o'clock in, in the evening. Oh my goodness, I, I, there's so much I wish I could have recorded for you guys, but I was told to be on the lookout for a spot. One of you reached out to me and said, please film yourself when you get to that part. I hope I didn't miss it. I hope I didn't miss it. I mean, because there's so many things that have got, gotten me, so many things that gave me pause, so many things that creeped me out, so many things that had me bumping my fist, so many things that had me just on the edge of my seat. I've been on the edge of my seat for this entire book. If I have missed, that part, I'm gonna be so disappointed in myself and I'm so sorry. But we have, we have about 220 pages left and stuff is, I mean, Stephen King amped everything up to 11, 200 pages ago, 300 pages ago. So it's been full throttle ever since. And I can tell you, it's been one of the most gripping things I've ever read. And I was, I don't know if this is like an abridged version or maybe a, a revised version, but I was aware, I was, I was given warning ahead of time that there is a certain scene in here that is Disgusting, inappropriate, disgusting, absolutely unnecessary. And I thought it would have happened by now, but it hasn't. I could be in the thick of it and it could be about to happen, so I'm gonna have to skip it, but I haven't read it yet. And so that's been very delightful. This has been such a good experience so far. Oh my goodness, if, if horror is like this all the time, I will quickly become a fan because good night, good night. I can't even describe guys. Yeah, we have about 90 pages, maybe 80 pages, I think, somewhere in between there before we can call it 200 for the day. I picked a good book to do this challenge. What is even going on? I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading I think part five and it is some of the most intense writing I've read in a very long time. If there's anything that Stephen King is so good at, it is, it is this building and mounting tension and then it's spilling over into this insane just montage of event after event after event because he has so many characters playing in these chapters. Just, it's so incredible how he can seamlessly move between past and present within the story, how he bounces between 19 1958 and 1985 and how I, I can't put it down. It has me on the edge of my seat the whole time. I thought I knew this story, but I was so wrong. This freaking book, man, this, this is so, so good. What do these characters think they're doing? We got grown adults making some childish decisions. Bill, Beverly, what are you doing? Stephen King, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> Forget it, we're just, we're just gonna move on. I have never in my life read a thousand pages of one book. Chapter 19 was one of the craziest thrill rides I've ever read. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. 
goodness. You're weaving in and out of past and present, past and present, past and present. So much happens that it goes by in such a blur, but holy crap, that was so good. That was so, so good. So I have 153 pages left. I'm going to save that for tomorrow. Today we did hit our 200 page mark. We read a thousand pages of one book in five days, which means tomorrow, tomorrow we should, we'll finish in six days. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I've heard crazy things about the end of this book. I mean, it's either something that you really, really loved or you were really, really let down by. Stephen King hasn't let me down yet once with one of his books. I'm just, I'm so ready to see how this freaking ends. Guys, holy crap, holy freaking crap. This is so good. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, hello, family and folks and friends. We just got back from work. We gotta get jumping on it. We have 153 pages left, so I think we can crank that out. I'm so excited, I've been thinking about it all day. This is the sixth day of the challenge, uh, I believe, which means we should, if we were to read 200 pages today, we'd hit 1,200 pages read for the challenge in, in under seven days. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna crank this sucker out, and then I'm gonna give you a freaking I'm gonna give you a, mm, a freaking uh, a review. This is gonna be great. I, I'm so glad that you've stuck with me this far. Let's cue the montage. does take a spider's form. What? 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 That's not as scary as it could have been. It says, no, not a spider either. Not really, but this shape isn't one it picked out of our minds. It's just the closest our minds can come to whatever it really is. So the closest your minds can come to what it really is is a freaking 15 foot tall spider. That's a little disappointing, but okay, whatever. We're not gonna hold it against them. If that's the closest their minds can come to it, that's the closest their minds can come to it. Run it back. That's actually pretty cool. Never mind. The, if you've read the book, that's actually pretty cool. The fact that it's taking the spider arachnid form, that's that's actually pretty freaking terrifying. <laughs> We have chapter 22 and 23 left, and then we have the last interlude, which is an epilogue. Less than a hundred pages to go. Mm. I just took Meshack out on a walk. What the fetch? What the fetch did he do? What, like, what was that? That was one of the most insane, like, most insanely, I don't even know how to think about this. The mental battle that I just read was so good. I didn't expect it to go like this. I did not expect it to go like this. The movies, the shows do nothing, do nothing to represent this. They don't represent this at all. This is so much better than, than any adaptation. Holy freaking crap. Let's see how it ends. Okay, that 
that scene, the scene that I was warned about. It's something inexplicably inappropriate for 11 and 12 year old to be doing, especially to each other. Crapped up on me. I thought it was in one of the interludes that I skipped, but no, it's stuffed right here at the end of chapter 22. It's just tucked neatly in the back. That makes this book go from a five to like a four. I love this book so much, but that one part, I knew it was coming. It's so vile. I just, I just, oh, don't, I don't understand it. Don't understand it why authors have to go that route. But we skipped it. It's over now so we can get back to the good stuff. <laughs> Folks, holy crap, holy cow, huh? We did it. We read it. We successfully completed reading 200 pages a day for one week. Holy crap, 1153 page book. We read it in six days. The goal was to do it in seven. I started last Saturday and I finished it yesterday night, which was Friday. Oh boy, this was not easy with a full-time job and also doing extracurricular YouTube stuff. So that's honestly a second full-time job. So I, I really cannot tell you how I did this, but it happened. It happened. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. I am so grateful for this experience. This was the wildest ride I think I've ever been on. This was my first attempt in so many ways. First attempt at reading a book that's over a thousand pages. First attempt at reading a horror novel. And first attempt trying to read 200 pages a day for a week. There have been days, you know, there, there have been certain books that I read 200 plus pages a day. Uh, I did that with Red Rising, the Lycanius trilogy. I, I found myself doing that with the Greenbone Saga books. There's definitely some stuff that I missed. There's definitely some information that I do not remember at all. But a lot of that's filler, a lot of it's fluff. I remember every single time it shows up to the children. I remember every single time that they fight it. I remember all the backstories because I, I thought the backstories to each character. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's recap, let's review the book. The cons, I have two major cons and they're each two different scenes. If you've read the book, you know what I'm gonna be talking about. First con is in the dump with the bullies. I thought that scene was absolutely unnecessary. So gross, so disgusting. Uh, I skipped it. The stuff building up to it, I thought, is this happening? Is this really about to happen? And then as soon as it started happening, uh, so disgusted. Uh, I skipped it until it was done and I, I was just appalled. Like, I just don't know why Stephen King has to write stuff like that. And then the second big con, the biggest of the biggest cons is in the sewers with the children. And I was warned beforehand that the, the scene in the sewers was a thing. But I thought, whoa, did I like not get to it? I, you know, because I thought it was going to end up happening earlier in the book. A thousand pages in, you think, wow, I got away scot-free. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Crept up on, out of nowhere. Once I saw it coming, skipped it entirely. These two instances are very inappropriate sexual scenes with minors. Does not need to be written in any literature. And because of those reasons, I I honestly want to give this book probably a 3.75. It's just, I just cannot believe it. Like, on, you know, there's there's books that have smut in it, but then there's, there's books like this that have things that would get people locked up. And it just didn't need to happen. It took away from the story severely. When you're at that point in the book, you're like less than 100 pages left and there's so much that's happening at once. You're getting this incredible back and forth between past and present and it's two climaxes that are being built together at the same time. It completely takes away from the high that you're supposed to feel. I hate that. I hated that so much. Honestly, those are my only two cons. They're huge and I needed to make mention of them because they're that bad. But the rest of it is all pros. Where to begin? Where to begin? You start off with a 
seen from the past and then you jump into the present. And the whole time there's there's interludes between you get some backstory and you get some well needed information. But oh my goodness, the beginning of the book alone is so creepy. It just it just primes you for the rest of the book. It's <laughs> some shocking stuff. And from then on, you're introduced to the main cast of characters. And my favorite, I, it's honestly, I thought I would like the kids' stories more than the adults because that's how I liked it in the in the miniseries. But I, I cannot pick between either one in the book. I loved both and I wanted both. When I was reading the kids, I wanted to know where the adults were. And when I was reading the adults, I wanted to know where the kids were. Thankfully, Stephen King, at the end, when you get to part five, he gives you both. He's giving you both at the same time. I didn't think it would scare me, but there were so many times, as I've said before, that I got chills. Oh, brother goose. Oh, buddy boy. Holy crap. I didn't think that an 1100 page book could hold my attention as much as it did. I thought, you know, something that was this thick had to have a lot of fluff in it, but it, it doesn't really have that much fluff at all. One thing Stephen King does very well, he does such a marvelous job with writing broken people, broken families, and broken relationships. Each of these characters had something happen to them in their lives. Not just by being plagued by the freaking scary clown. He does such a brilliant thing of making these things feel so real. Making these relationships and these family ties feel so authentic as if I was reading about real people. It is, it's so well done. The thing that kept me going wasn't just, oh, what scary part is coming next? That definitely was an aspect of it. I wanted to read about the characters. I wanted to read about their lives. And speaking of characters, I think Bill Denbro has just made the list of top 10 fictional characters of all time. Bill Denbro is such a good character. Even as a kid, he is the man. He's not called Big Bill for no reason. There's one more thing. I, I wasn't expecting it. The epilogue, but the epilogue was the most beautiful ending I think I've ever read in any book. There's something that I just read over and over last night because it was so beautifully written. It's stuff like this that makes this book one of my all-time faves. You don't have to look back to see those children. Part of your mind will see them forever, live with them forever, love with them forever. They're not necessarily the best part of you. They were once the repository of all you could become. Children, I love you. I love you so much. So drive away quick. Drive away while the last of the light slips away. Drive away from dairy, from memory, but not from desire. That stays. The bright cameo of all we were and all we believed as children, all that shone in our eyes even when we were lost and the wind blew in the night. Drive away and try to keep smiling. Get a little rock and roll on the radio and go toward all the life there is with all the courage you can find and all the belief you can muster. Be true, be brave, stand. All the rest is darkness. I think he dedicated this to his family, but mainly he dedicated it to his three children. You know, when you read stuff like that, it, it was just, it's a perfect honorific to his children. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness, after going through through such a dark and terrifying and terrific story, you get the most beautiful resolution. Ah, uh, this video was so fun. I will definitely be doing this in the future. I think next time I wanted to see, instead of just like one thick boy book, one thick hefty chunky boy, I think next time I'm gonna try to do smaller books and see how many books I can read. But guys, thank you so much. Holy moly. I, I got so much encouragement. A lot of you said that you were excited to see this, so I'm, I'm hoping that this wasn't a letdown or a disappointment for you. I can't thank you enough for this community. We we have hit over 4,000 subscribers. I don't know how that happened. How are there 4,000 of you? Stick around for more content drops. We got a fun month of reading coming up and a lot of fun videos and a lot of fun content coming up. So stick around. Thank you all so much for being here. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one.